California. Flew in two nights ago, three nights ago. Woke up and the jet lag didn't set in, so I ran to the gym the next morning. Squatted 405 for five for a comeback PR. Couldn't really deadlift, I really, I have clammy hands. There's my confession of the day, I have really clammy hands. I don't know why. They're extra clammy. So I could, I pulled 450 or 465 for like three singles because I couldn't hold on to the bar at the other gym. Did absolutely nothing yesterday. Supposed to have a Skype meeting, got canceled. Regular email stuff. Still really tired and really cold. It was like 75 degrees yesterday. I still wore a beanie for some reason. I think New York's inside of me now. So we're gonna bench, overhead, chin, lunge, salt, a salt bike, and then I got a fucking flat tire, so I'm gonna go fix that. Oi. Check out Mama's Boys. We have Brad Schoenfeld, the king of bodybuilding science, on in a couple of weeks. What seems to be the main driver of hypertrophy is a volume. So how many sets, how many reps, with how much weight, on a muscle part, progressively overloading over time. Powerlifting, uh, I guess there's kind of three main drivers. Volume, skill acquisition, or skill itself, the efficiency of how well you move the barbell on a squat bench dead or or any movement overhead whatever even a curl uh, and then like neural efficiency how well your brain can tell your muscles and your fibers to fire and how hard i guess power explosiveness all that so do they go hand in hand yes quite a bit um bodybuilding versus powerlifting i guess may, maybe some of the same Today, Junior! The most important things for a bodybuilder is to um, spread out that volume and spread out how much energy you put into each body part. Uh, so the exercise variation goes up. Um, the exercise variation is more important and not as important, perhaps, where um, you know, a bodybuilder could easily replace barbell bench with dumbbell bench. Powerlifter can't really just erase the barbell bench press. Um, the exercises, there are variations in powerlifting as well, but whatever the split may be, you need, you know, 70% and up, has to be squat bench dead of some nature, maybe even higher percent. Uh, where bodybuilding, technically, you can get away with a lot of different things. New study, Brad Schoenfeld told us about, don't quote me, but um, basically said also that with hypertrophy and muscle building, especially in the biceps with this last study he showed that the mind-muscle connection that many of people talk about um, is more important, I guess, than some of these new age people may think. So feeling your bicep, thinking about your bicep, thinking about the connection and the flex in the bicep, the concentration, um, will help it grow over time. So mind-muscle connection, general volume, uh, obviously diet and those things for hypertrophy. Being in a calorie surplus is very important for hypertrophy. Being in a calorie surplus is important and can help a shit ton with strength. Um, so there's a lot, lot, lot more similarities than there are differences. Rep ranges, generally speaking, you can gain muscle, build size with lower rep ranges, one through five, especially if you're getting stronger in those movements and then you know your eight rep, 10 rep, 12 rep uh, increase. Again, then you can handle more volume at higher loads, which benefits both. It's kind of backwards for powerlifting where, you know, if you build a base of strength and muscle at tens and eights, then hopefully with proper programming and peaking, then you can use that muscle more efficiently and produce a higher one rep max. So similar, um, it's kind of how you skin the cat, I guess. How much is that? 65, 165, 175? 
Somewhere in there? Not that strong. <laughs> Something not that good. Something that I'm mad guilty of is neglecting or forgetting or throwing to the side things uh, that got me to where I am. Example, doing a lot of unilateral work, you know, Bulgarian split squats, uh, lunges, things of that nature, in the process of rehabbing my back. Are they what helped or fixed my back? I don't know, I think they definitely helped. Or was just taking time off what fixed my back? Who's to say? But as soon as, like now, I'm starting to feel good, I have to make sure that I don't totally throw them away. So, squatting twice a week, I'm gonna start deadlifting twice a week. Um, one off the ground and one up blocks. But what I'm gonna try to do on this third day, today's mostly an upper body day, I'm gonna try to do some lunges, just to kind of keep that unilateral uh, balance going. Stretches my hip a little bit, uh, as well as obviously works one leg at a time. So, we'll go chin ups, set of 10 to 15. Lunges down and back, no weight. Almost use it more as like a recovery day, a recovery workout. A little bit of arms. Even the assault bike, although I don't want to. Uh, just being able to push and like move like a normal athlete, I think can help keep my back loose, so. There's that. Don't stop. Don't forget what got you where you are. Put down your pipe and smoke it. This person asks on your Instagram, what are your thoughts on touch and go deadlifts? So I'm a big fan of, I guess, always knowing what your goal is and building the best path there. If your goal is powerlifting or even one rep max strength, I think that we need to most emulate that even when we're doing reps. And this is very common in uh, the squat also where people kind of do constant tension, not locking anything out, not breathing correctly. Similar to a touch and go where I think the benefits of time under tension don't even come to close to outweighing the benefits of doing cleaner reps. Um, time under tension has some merits. Uh, some people do believe that it can help you build more muscle, but I think that progressively overloading with your volume and proper technique, being more efficient in that movement over time will allow you to handle more weight and more reps so that it kind of flips that scale. So I suggest in the squat, if you're doing a set of eight, in your head you should be thinking about it as eight perfect singles in a row. If you're deadlifting, I've done it uh, many a video on here, probably three by now, kind of the Ed Cohn style deadlift, or uh, in, in some cases, it'll depend on the athlete and how maybe inefficient they are at a setup or being consistent, we'll literally do full resets where they'll pull, they'll let it down, take two steps back, two steps up, and they'll repeat this with a set of five or eight. Now that may be a little extreme for most, uh, but some people that can't get the sensation or need more practice at getting the sensation of a one rep, the starting position. Issue with touch and go, one, even if you're really, really um, careful, you're gonna end up bouncing. Uh, you're gonna get some momentum of those plates hitting the ground and coming up. You're gonna lose strength in that bottom end. Two, your form is not gonna be the same. Uh, on a deadlift, squat, and bench, we want to be as consistent as we, as we can, taking away all external factors so we can control those variables. Uh, especially on the squat and bench, the barbell should almost, almost, the bench is a little bit different, but almost look the exact same going down as it does up. Uh, and then in the deadlift, obviously we want every single rep to look the exact same. Uh, and if you're touching going, you know, anything that I've pulled, shit, 90, 90 to 98%, I could probably do for a double touch and go. So, does that help? Thanks. I'm gonna breath. One more set, arms, elliptical, burrito, fix my tire find a couch, do some emails, go to bed. See you guys Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, Mama's Boys Podcast, two episodes a week, Tuesday and Friday, iTunes, Stitcher, mamasboyspodcast.com, Twitch, you wanna come hang out live, we're doing it almost every night, probably trying to do Mondays through Thursdays, around 5 p.m. Pacific time. All that link in the bio. Decent upper body day, bench is grinding and grooving. Lower body day Saturday, catch you guys in the next video. Smash the thumbs up. You know the, you know the drill. See you next time.